Coming up on Chicago Bears now, the latest injury news for both the Bears and the Texans leading into Sunday Night Football. Shane Waldron speaks to the media, took some ownership on last week's shortcomings offensively, and Richard Hightower, the special teams coordinator, ripping Bayless Jones Jr. We're going to discuss it all here on this show, but first... If we get to 4,000 followers on our Facebook page, Facebook, yeah, we have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash chatsportsbears, we will give away a free jersey. To be entered, you got to give us a follow. Once we get to 4,000 followers, we're at like 3,100. We'll do a jersey drawing giveaway. Check it out, facebook.com slash chatsportsbears. All right, let's get into the latest on Rome Adunze. Did not practice for a second straight day with a knee injury. Matt Eberflus on Wednesday saying that he's day-to-day, -day, that it's not serious, but uh, did not practice. And neither did Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen, who's been dealing with a bit of a heel foot injury. Remember Ryan Poles a couple weeks ago said he had a cleat issue and his foot's been sore and I, you know, are, are they hiding something there? I'm not sure. Maybe it's some kind of a bone bruise. I don't know. But he came up gimpy on Sunday, and uh, he has not practiced yet this week. So uh, that's certainly interesting and certainly a concern that both guys could be out. Now, my official prediction for this before Friday's injury report comes out, I think on Friday, Adunze will be ruled out. I, I just don't think the juice is worth the squeeze to push him in this game. If it was a playoff game or something and there wasn't a major risk of further injury, sure, but it's week two. You're one to know. If you lose to the Texans, it's not a huge deal. Um, obviously, you want to win every game. I think Keenan Allen's a game-time decision. I, I think this is more of a pain tolerance thing with him. It might be something that lingers, and maybe it's just one of those situations where he doesn't practice a ton this year. Who knows? Uh, I think he's a game-time decision. They elevate Colin Johnson from the practice squad to help fill in for Rome, and uh, they make a decision 90 minutes before kickoff on whether or not Keenan Allen plays. But I don't think Rome will play, and I think Keenan will be a game-time decision. What do you guys think on Cannon? Do you think he plays on Sunday? Type P for play, type W for won't. I'll stay optimistic. I think he'll give it a go. Uh, he's clearly not going to be 100%, but uh, uh, I think it's a pain management situation more than anything else. I think he'll be out there despite not practicing this week. We'll see if he goes through uh, some of the walkthrough stuff on Friday. All right, you look at the full injury report. We mentioned Allen and Adunze. Kari Blasengame did not practice with a knee issue, so keep an eye on that one. They may have to elevate uh, a tight end, like uh, Steven Carlson from the practice squad could be an option there. Ryan Bates, who's been limited with this shoulder, played last week, limited yesterday, did not practice today. Could he be someone who's out? He split time with Nate Davis and actually got more snaps than Nate Davis at right guard in week one, so that is significant. Mercedes Lewis, weekly rest day is on Thursday, so nothing there. Gran Amagaji still limited with that quad. They're clearly trying to ramp him up. Uh, Demarcus Walker uh, limited with a foot after not practicing yesterday, so he's trending up. And then Zach Pickens, full participant. So he's certainly tracking to play for the first time this year. Did not play in the opener with that groin issue, but uh, that would obviously give you uh, a little boost to your interior defensive line. Now we shift to the Texans. Dalton Schultz, is he going to miss Sunday night football? He has not practiced this week with an ankle injury, and I think this would be pretty significant. Dalton Schultz was probably C.J. Stroud's number two target last year. Now, Tank Dell missing some time certainly uh, hurt, but uh, he was really good a year ago. Five touchdowns, 59 grabs. Week one, he had just three catches for 16 yards, but pretty reliable tight end, so that would kind of give uh, C.J. Stroud's safety net uh that would take that away from him, I should say, if he can't go. I, I think that's a pretty notable deal. If he's absent, um, I, I think that's pretty significant uh, for Houston's offense. Now, obviously, they still have their big three at receiver and uh, Collins, uh, Tank Dell, and, of course, Stephon Diggs. But if uh, Schultz is out, I think that's uh, at least somewhat notable. Uh, you look at the injury report as a whole for Houston. MJ Stewart did not practice. He's a depth safety. Probably won't play this week. Uh, Nico Collins popped up today, limited with an illness. I would expect him to play Sunday. Uh, probably just woke up with you know a cold or something today, but keep an eye on that. Damian Pierce limited with a hamstring uh, injury. And then Juice Scruggs, their starting center, popped up today as well with a groin injury. He was also limited. Him and Pierce, new additions as well. So those soft tissue injuries, uh, as you know, Bears fans, those can linger. So um, keep an eye on those because that's, that's a couple notable pieces there uh, on the Texans injury report. Now today's show is sponsored by Rocket Money. Save money with Rocket Money. They're going to help you 
cancel any subscriptions that you no longer want, uh, negotiate to lower some of your bills, and just monitor your spending overall. Uh, that way you can stay on top of your finances. What Rocket Money does is show you all of your subscriptions on one screen. And if you want to cancel one, click cancel, and they will handle the rest for you. You can also negotiate to lower those bills, like I mentioned, and uh, by up to 20%. You kind of send them a bill, click on it, and they'll see if they can find you a better offer out there uh, with another provider or with that same provider, whatever the case may be. If you're looking to lower your uh, electric bill, uh, homeowner's insurance, whatever, Rocket Money can help you do that and sometimes save up to 20%. So that's pretty awesome. Other benefits, you can check your credit score on a daily basis. You can set budgets and have them send you updates on a weekly basis. Uh, get started. Rocket Money's awesome. Staying on top of your finances, rocketmoney.com slash bears now. That link is where you go to download the app. It's in the description and comments of this video. Stay on top of your spending. Cancel any unwanted subscriptions. If you use the app to its fullest potential, you'll save over $700 per month. It's Rocket Money. Get started today. Shane Waldron speaking to the media uh, for the first time since the Bears only mustered up 148 yards in week one. It's it's crazy to say that out loud. They won a game in the year of 2024 with less than 150 yards of total offense. Uh, pretty amazing. Uh, just kind of a little rapid fire on some things uh, Shane Waldron uh, touched on. He was asked, of course, about Cole Komet's usage, getting less snaps than Gerald Everett. And uh, most of the things Waldron talked about, he took ownership on uh, why certain things happen the way they did. And he said, we know Cole is one of the top tight ends in the league. He's done a great job. That's on me. And – Look, I, I think we have to remember this is a this is the first game in a new season with a rookie quarterback with a lot of different pieces offensively that can be utilized. And I think sometimes depending on the flow of the game, probably what you plan to do can get away from you a little bit. And we have to, you know, acknowledge somewhat of a grace period. Now, obviously, it's got to be better. And you're playing Cole. Com you're paying Cole Komet twelve, thirteen million bucks per year. He's got to play more. I mean, he's a guy who should be playing the majority of your snaps, not less than fifty percent, and not less than Gerald Everett. Now, should his snaps be down compared to last year when he was playing like every single snap per game and he was beat to hell by the end of the year? Of course, that's why he signed Gerald Everett. But he should not get seven less snaps than Everett unless you're just getting drilled and you're going five wide every play. Okay, fine, go with Everett. But that was not the case last week, even though you were behind. All right, personnel packages as a whole was something he touched on. He said, you know, the flow of the game, uh, some of the struggles uh, that led to, you know, losing some balance and what they were trying to do. And I, I think also, too, remember there was a stretch in the second and third quarter where they were getting in – second and third and longs behind the chains. I think that led to just throwing some things out the window. So uh, he acknowledged he's got to fix some of that. More tempo. I, this is something I said, and I agree with him. Pick your spots. He said he wants to find some opportunities to play with more tempo. I think that'll play into the strength of Caleb Williams. Like, while he's still learning how to be a professional quarterback, string a couple first downs together and, hey, let's push the tempo a little bit. Get him into a rhythm and something that he feels comfortable with. So – you saw Caleb once or twice last week after a first down, like, hey, let's let's get the play in, get the play in, let's go. Uh, I think uh, finding those opportunities when it makes sense, I think, could be very beneficial. Uh, he did say that the offense felt good that they didn't turn the ball over, and I think that's something worth pointing out. Now, should you be celebrating that when you had 148 yards? No, but there's no doubt it helped you win the game by playing clean, at least in terms of not turning it over. Can't say they played clean in general. They were missing blocks, dropping passes. Caleb's missing throws. It wasn't a clean performance. But in terms of taking care of the football, it was. They really only put the ball in harm's way one time on that crazy ball that got deflected 20 yards in the air that Roma Dunze caught, fumbled, and Nate Dave, or, uh, Tevin Jenkins recovered. Just a wild play. Uh, but uh, I like Matt Arifu said, that was the difference in the game. Their guy turned it over three times. Our guy didn't turn it over. We won the ball game. So, uh, you know, against Houston – while you want to probably find some opportunities to be more aggressive, if you can play turnover free, uh, you're probably going to have to do that if you want a chance to win this game. And then, of course, on Caleb, uh, talked about uh, his rookie's first start. He said he wants to see Caleb improve on this week is to play with clean eyes and clean feet. And I think that's kind of, especially the foot part of it, is something that Williams pointed to uh, when he spoke to the media on Wednesday. 
he said he rushed his drop a few times, and that led to a couple of errant throws. And I, I think that's pretty clear it did. Uh, there were a couple throws where, one, he just skipped to Roma Dunze. Uh, he overthrew a couple balls, and you're just like, okay, like, accuracy is not really an issue of this kid's. Like, it, it never has been. So that was abnormal, and I think a lot of that can probably be uh, attributed to rushing the footwork, you know, things like that, not getting your feet set. So, um, you know, it all works together playing quarterback. The footwork with the timing, with the mind, with throwing the football, uh, it all it's all a very specific calculation, and uh, it just got a little out of whack in week one. So I do think those things will get better over time. And Waldron said, a lot of this stuff, uh, you just need the game reps. And obviously Caleb's going to get those. So uh, hopefully uh, he can build off a not-so-great week and get a little bit better this week, and we'll see if it's good enough to compete with the Texans. Will the offense bounce back? Will it get better this week? Type Y for yes, type in for no. I do think it'll be better. The question is how much. Obviously, we're not going to know that until we see the game, but I do expect improvements, uh, especially from the quarterback. All right, let's cite Bayless Jones. Richard Hightower uh, was asked about Bayless, Bayless Jones muffing the kickoff, and he got straight to the point and essentially was just like, yeah, it's unacceptable. I mean, there, there's no defending it. And he also said he's completely comfortable with DeAndre Carter uh, being both the punt and kick returner. Now, he didn't really rule out the idea that Velas could get another opportunity as the kick returner, but I kind of got the sense that they just don't know if it's worth it anymore, and that's kind of what I've been saying. Like, why would you keep giving this guy chances? And it's a shame, and he even said, look – on a personal level, I feel for the kid, but as on a coaching level, the number one important thing on special teams is taking care of the football. And he, because what you can't do special teams do is take away possessions from your offense. You just can't. Now, ideally, you're doing more than that. You're either scoring on special teams, like you've done the pump block, or you're getting good field position, but it would be better to never return a kickoff and take the ball at the 30 or even just catch it and get tackled at the 20 than doing what Valus Jones did. So I don't know if he'll get another shot. I'd be shocked if he was back there on Sunday. Maybe if it's the third or fourth kickoff and there's some flow in the game, they'll put him back there. But I can't imagine he's back there for the opening kickoff. And look, it's something he's going to have to earn back. I don't know how you earn it back without getting a rep in, in a game because it, clearly they like what they see in practice, but – the game, he just he tends to make a mistake. And so I, I'm not sure where it goes from here with Valus as the returner. He's still on the roster, so I would expect he'll have some type of a role. Uh, but, yeah, it was it was an ugly start uh, to what's been a tumultuous two and a half seasons for Valus Jones. All right, appreciate everybody for tuning in to today's show. We'll continue to monitor the injury situation, Friday's injury report. If there's something notable, we'll have a video for that, plus a whole lot more. So keep us locked in. My name is Harrison Graham. We will see you guys soon.